Righto, um, good morning. Um, I have a, a finesse uh, overlocker here. The complaint is the, the pedal doesn't work. So firstly we have to go measure. I took this thing apart, this, the top lid. And just quickly to explain, here's the plug comes from the um, 220 volt input. And now it is connected on this uh, plug here and then it feeds to this control. Now what happened here, what's happening is uh, the live and the neutral is here, as it's for obvious for the light, elect for the electricity. And here the same thing, it's parallel here to the live and the neutral. Now this black wire is the one that goes to the furthest point in the right hand side. This is a speed control. So this live is the input. Your uh, neutral is just for reference for electronics. And the output after the speed control is um, your, the black wire. So I measure, plug it in, measure 220 here. And when I activate this lever, then I get the output of 220 volt here. All right. You will measure 220 even though if you, uh, what, no matter what area and the speed control is because it's no, it's no um, current drawn. So it will give you a 220 until the motor starts running if you would do that and then um, you will get a lower voltage here, obviously. There's a switcher, the electronic board. I think here's just a little speed control here. Uh, you can see here what's happening here. You just for interest sake, here's a micro switch. The moment you press the button of the speed control, it opens the micro switch and then it starts to open the circuit. But what this is for, that when you are in a neutral position, the the electronics is not on, it just doesn't want to harm the motor or something. The moment you press it, it opens the circuit and then it controls by the potentiometer. Okay, I'm going to close this now. <coughs> it's an interesting way how this thing works. Uh, your pedal runs around here and then a little ball and then it pushes that thing on the slide up and down. Let's see first close it and then we can look what the problem is because it was don't want to run so with you the person press the button the machine doesn't go so obviously something further inside the motor inside there is maybe a problem so let's go and first close this thing and then carry on the first we're going to do <coughs> we turn this machine around underneath is a few screws that we need to loosen to get the bottom uh, plate off Okay, then you have to remove both of those screws there, and there underneath is another one, there is another screw there on the inside. Let's take that off quickly. Now you can see this whole cover is coming off. I just put this thing aside there. See now yeah, the cover is off. And now there's your motor. Here's the side of the motor. Now I need to check from here on. Follow the, the voltage, the electricity, and see where the wires is going and what is wrong. Right, I <coughs> remove the motor now. You can see here's the electric motor, sewing motor. Uh, so I need to open it now to see what's going on. It's not stuck. It is moving, but obviously something wrong inside. Okay, the next step is to open the, the, the casing. But inside there's two nuts in the front inside there, but there's a hole through and a, <coughs> or a slot through. So you can't, can't open it to the normal screwdriver because the, the screw is in the middle. So you take an old screwdriver, just cut the slot in the front and then make it fit and then you can open your thing. Okay. Okay. Now the issue is to try to open the grab screw inside the in the front uh, of the <coughs> of the <coughs> sorry in the because otherwise you can't take the cover off. But this grab screw is very stubborn. Um, I tried to put the Allen key in there, but it doesn't seem to fit. But it somehow looks like if it's not a real Allen key, it looks like a pin has been pressed in there. So uh, the next step is to to get some of the plastic out 
to see what's going on there. But let's put it on the on my bench and I cut if I file the back part of that plastic open just to uh, see if I can't then if I for that plastic remove slide off the 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 pulley but it's stuck I don't know if there's like an indent or a reach inside the on the on the shaft so that the pulley is maybe pressed on there or or what is just very very stubborn so um that won't help but I don't want to to you to damage the the pulley because I don't know if you can buy one of those things uh, so uh, in the past you always like damage the thing and then afterwards realize you should have uh, gone the different route so the best is just to <coughs> to make another plan to access the inside of the motor right, the next step is to take a soldering iron first and just to go melt the plastic off that the sideways f of on the shaft from the grub screw to see if I can't slide off the um, the pulley but as I said uh, with no luck um, it is so stubborn I don't know what it is but also don't want to pull too much on the shaft and then damage inside of the motor so um, uh, the, the next step is then to, to go a different route and um, uh, as I said use my soldering iron instead of um, getting the, the, the pulley off it will be better to, to melt the, 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 the top of the casing and then try to ac get access to your the wiring of the motor so then the, as I said um, I'm gonna leave the pulley rather don't fiddle any further with the pulley I'm gonna cut here cut up and then sideways and then just open try to just to open the motor from that side and then I can see what's going inside here okay after opening I <coughs> realize there is um, some wires in all the wires access wires and the coils but there's like a yellow device there it looks like a fuse some of the electronic uh, devices had like a, a fuse in a thermal fuse and they normally blow and then you can just replace it but uh, <coughs> this one looks like more like a, um, what do you call it like a inductor it looks like small wires on there so unless the wires that inductor won't some blow it's just for noise suppression and uh, <coughs> I need to um, I, 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 I tested it with my multimeter and I found like it is fine so the next step is to do the other side as well to see what is <coughs> how does it look from from the other side of the plastic and then uh, we can maybe see something from that side <coughs> okay um, you can see the armature it still looks fine inside doesn't look if it's burned or anything and uh, okay let's just see try to open the other side also take your soldering iron and melt it and um, but what I found here it is um, it's just interesting you can see there's a loose wire there's a, a thermal fuse in the middle of the of the field coils and then just when I touch it it just came loose it's like a dry joint and that will be some of my indication that that is a problem for the open circuit of the engine I'm just wind it around that little pin there in the side and I solder it resolder it there and then um, that is the I'm gonna if you measure now with the multimeter and then I can get like 100 to 200 ohms through the motor so something tells me there's something happening and uh, plug it back in press the your pedal and there it goes the motor is working so that was obviously the problem um, always like say look for a thermal fuse or a, some sort of safety device inside your motor that you can use to um, to fix your your problem
Okay, now I just put back the, all the stuff that I that I melted out the covers, and I somehow used duct tape to close it there because there's airflow through the motor. So there's a fan in the back to cool down the motor while it's run. So you need to close back that hole. 